The economy is taking a beating and our two biggest states are desperate to get out of lockdown. But New South Wales is on track for 80% double vaccinated before the country does. And the Premier wants to reopen her international border at that point. Will the federal government let her? And why would Queensland open its internal border at 70% if there are thousands of cases a day in New South Wales? I spoke with Treasurer Josh Frydenberg. Treasurer, thank you for your time. Today's economic figures weren't quite as bad as they could have been, but with our two most populated states in hard lockdown, there's really no reason to celebrate, is there? There's certainly no reason to celebrate and you know today's numbers uh, will be cold comfort for millions of Australians who are in lockdown but they do show the resilience of the economy because as you said Tracy it's better than what the market was forecasting and it showed that our economy continued to grow even though it was still subject to lockdowns for 29 days out of that uh, June quarter we saw lockdowns in one part or another of the country including in our four largest states but you're right in the September quarter which is the next quarter and we won't get that of that information until much later in the year uh, you will see a fuller uh, and a more significant impact from those lockdowns in New South Wales and Victoria. Now you're no fan of lockdowns but do you think that the vaccinations would have galloped along at the rate they are in New South Wales without a prolonged lockdown? Well, I certainly think that the lockdowns have given an added incentive to, to those people in New South Wales, indeed those people in Victoria, to go out and get the jab. So I do think it's probably seen, helped drive those, uh, that rapid increase in numbers uh, of vaccinations. And that's good news uh, for the country, but it's obviously bad news that people are being subject to these lockdowns, which are a pretty blunt instrument and obviously impose and impinge on our freedoms and make uh, life very difficult for families and for small businesses. The Victorian Premier is now offering freedoms from lockdown for in, in return for vaccination thresholds. Mm. What is the incentive for Western Australians and for Queenslanders to get vaccinated when they basically have no virus and the borders are closed and they're not in lockdown? Well, firstly, you just referenced Victoria. I think today was a game changer. They're not my words, they're the words of former Australian of the Year, Patrick McGorry, with the acknowledgement in Victoria that they can't eliminate the virus. They can suppress it, they can buy some time as more and more people get vaccinated, but they can't eliminate the virus. And that's what we've been saying uh, consistently. It's really important that we learn to live with COVID. And that equally applies uh, for people in Western Australia and in Queensland. Uh, you don't know uh, where the Delta uh, strain, the Delta variant will hit next. And it could very well uh, go to Queensland and Western Australia. We hope not, but it could very well. And therefore, people in that state need to protect themselves by getting vaccinated. And as state premiers and chief ministers, they need to stick to the plan that was agreed at National Cabinet, a plan that will actually give hope to the small businesses out there, give hope to families and will allow us as a country to adjust to that reality of living safely with COVID. Treasurer, they don't seem to want to live with the virus. They don't want to open the borders. There's no real incentive for them to do so when they are sitting there happily with no cases. Now, and, and you can't really blame them given that New South Wales at the time that we hit 70% is predicted by some to be on around 3,000 to 4,000 cases a day. I mean, you can't blame Queensland for not wanting to open the border at the end of September if that's the case. Well, my message to Queenslanders is certainly not to blame them. My message to Queenslanders is to engage them and to get them to come and get the vaccinations in the numbers that we've seen in the southern states. In Queensland and in Western Australia, first dose vaccinations are around 51%. In Victoria, it's around 57%. In New South Wales, it's as high as 69%. But when you see prominent and influential uh, people from Western Australia like Kerry Stokes or Rob Scott who runs West Farmers come out and say it's important that their state and indeed all states and territories stick to the plan. You know they've also got the best economic interests of the people of Western Australia at heart because we've seen labour force shortages in Western Australia with its booming mining and construction sectors. In Queensland we hear all the time from tourism businesses who are doing it really tough because of the lockdowns in the southern states but also because of the closed borders. It's really important for jobs in Queensland and in Western Australia that their borders open safely in accordance with the plan. Australians are craving normality and particularly those Australians who are locked mm. down right now. They're desperate for normality mm. and right now that's predicated on 80% 
national vaccination target of 80% of adults. How do we get to 80% nationally without WA and Queensland ramping up vaccinations? Because I can't see how. I've been crunching the figures. Well, I've had my calculator out and I cannot see how we get mm. there without WA and Queensland. You should get a job at Treasury, Tracy. but uh, <laughs> it's good to see you're crunching that calculator. I hope it's not an abacus. Um, but look, the, 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 the key point here, the key point here is that only when all the country are engaged in the vaccine rollout can we actually get to those numbers as quickly as possible. And the restrictions will ease from 70 per cent. Uh, that's what the Doherty modelling has said. And, you know, if it's not 70 or 80 per cent, uh, Tracy, when, what is the number? What is the number when our kids can go back to school? What is the number when small businesses can reopen? What is the number when we can go to the weddings and the funerals of loved ones? And when, what is the number of when we can travel more freely in our own country? I mean, I've said how in the past, how ridiculous would it be for someone in New South Wales or Victoria to be able to travel to Canada before they go to Cairns or to be able to go to a Fiji or Singapore or Bali before they go to Perth. It's really important that we open up as one and that people in Queensland and Western Australia go out and get the jab. OK, I'm glad you used that analogy It's because it's an important one because the New South Wales Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, wants international travel into and out of New South Wales for fully vaccinated mm. people to resume when New South Wales hits 80%. Is she right? Should that happen? Well, it's certainly a conversation that we're up for. Uh, we are very happy to talk to them about international borders because that is something that the federal government has responsibility for. And the other thing that they're talking about in New South Wales is moving to home quarantine. And obviously that's going to make our life a lot more easier for, for international and uh, visitors or Australians who are coming home. And whether it's international students, whether it's skilled workers, uh, whether it's uh, tourists and, and other visitors, uh, we want to open up our borders, but we want to do so when it's safe to do so and 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 therefore getting to those vaccination rates is going to be absolutely key so are you saying that the federal government would be willing to lift international borders for new south wales alone because new south wales will probably hit 80 percent before anyone else and not wait for 80 percent nationally because and the reason i'm asking you that is because the federal trade and tourism minister dan tian told the sydney morning herald a couple of days ago that international borders cannot open until we hit 80 percent nationally so have you talked to him about that well, obviously, we want to get to 80% nationally, and that's what our target is, and that's what was agreed. But in terms of having conversations with individual jurisdictions about what their goals are for international um, targets and for opening up international borders, that's a conversation we've got to have. We're not saying we're going to open them when New South Wales gets to that level. What we're saying is we're happy to have that conversation to plan for the day that Australia gets to 80% target and we can see our international borders open. Have you talked to your flatmate, the Prime Minister, about that? What does he think about that? The, the notion that, you know, New South Wales might open the border internationally before everybody else? Because it's a critical question. People in New well, South again, Wales are racing to be vaccinated yeah. because they want normality. Yeah. Well, look, we're not saying at this point in time a date for opening the international borders. What we're saying is that we want to reach that 80% target. And that's a national target. And as you know, Tracy, it's a two key target. It's a target where you have 80% within those domestic jurisdictions, individual states, and it's an 80% target nationally. That's a conversation about international borders that we want to have once we get to those targets. And of course, we're happy to talk to all the states and the territories because their economies do depend on opening up those borders when it's safe to do so. OK, so Je I know we need to move on, but just to be clear, you're not ruling out 80% for New South Wales to go it alone for international borders? Look, I'm not saying that we're going to open the international borders for just one state. What I'm saying is that we're happy to have a broader conversation with them of what their plans are around quarantine, around opening up internationally. That's the key point. We've set those targets at National Cabinet at 70 and 80 per cent. We want to stick to it. OK. Everyone wants normality, as we were talking about before, but New South Wales is bracing for a really hard October uh, in terms of case numbers and probably mm. a rising death toll and a stretched hospital system. Mm. Have Australians been properly warned about what opening up and living with COVID is going to mean? Well, it's certainly a conversation that we're having right now, Tracy, with the, 
with the Australian people and that is about the fact that you can't eliminate the virus, you need to live with it. And that means continuing to have health restrictions in place which can be short of those stringent lockdowns that we currently see. That's really important. That is really important. And so we are focused on ensuring our health system is prepared uh, for the cases that it may have to deal with. Um, that's ensuring that we have the right workforce in place, but that's also ensuring that Australians are conditioned uh, to know that when you get um, to open up, when you still have 70 and 80 per cent vaccination rates, that you will still see serious illness. You still will see um, tragic deaths. You still will see hospitalisations and, and cases. But it's a reality that all the other countries around the world, Tracy, have confronted. All the other countries around the world have confronted living with COVID. And it's something that Australia has to do and it's something we have to do based on the medical advice available to us. But countries around the world saw a lot more death than we did. And 80% of adults vaccinated mm. means 36% of people unvaccinated, 9 million Australians unprotected as we open up and live with COVID. 9 million unprotected. If 5% of them end up in hospital and a quarter of those end up in ICU, they're quite eye-popping figures given what we have dealt with so far. Well, again, you go back to the Doherty modelling and they point out that when you get to those 70 and 80 per cent vaccination targets, the transmissibility of the virus reduces. The number of people who get seriously sick reduces and, of course, the number of deaths also reduces. But it's incumbent upon every Australian who's eligible uh, to get the vaccine to go out and get it not just to protect themselves, but to protect their community and ultimately to do their part to see our economy open up, to see stringent lockdowns come to an end and to see border, uh, border restrictions eased as well. On another matter, you encouraged big business to pressure the states to stick to the plan and open up and big business responded. Are you considering now asking businesses, those businesses that pocketed billions of dollars in JobKeeper that they didn't need last year to give it back? I mean, you've obviously got a bit of influence over business. <laughs> well, I've consistently said, Tracy, that all businesses who have the ability to pay back JobKeeper should. But there were many billions of dollars paid to companies that didn't actually need it. And the government doesn't hesitate to go after welfare recipients when they're overpaid for, by $2,000 here and there. It's a little bit rich to go after the poor while these big multi-million dollar companies get billions of dollars of taxpayers' money that they didn't need. Well, I'll take you to task on that analogy there, Tracy, because we have always said that if a business received JobKeeper in breach of the law, we're coming after them. And we have. We've collected that money. But it was the most remarkable program, and it has seen now the fact that more people are employed in Australia than before the pandemic began. You can't say the same for Canada. You can't say the same for the United Kingdom. You can't say the same for the United States. It's a remarkable program that has served Australia well. Josh Frydenberg, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg.